SIBO, how do you test for it and how do you actually get rid of it? So SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. And a lot of people have SIBO. If you have IBS, there's a good chance you have SIBO. And what really SIBO is, is it's bacteria from your large intestine for some reason overgrows and comes up into your small intestine and can cause all kinds of symptoms like bloating, constipation, and or diarrhea, a lot of food sensitivities, abdominal pain and discomfort. Um, you can also end up with some acid reflux, heartburn issues as well. Um, and then that can also lead to a lot of cognitive issues um, in addition to all of this. So SIBO, how do we test for it? So there's a couple ways that we can test for it in, in kind of the functional medicine space. The biggest one is a SIBO breath test. Now, keep in mind, this is only testing for two types of SIBO. It is also not perfect. It is also quite sensitive. So if you don't take it at exactly the right way, if you've had some foods, there's a lot of preparation going into this. If you don't take it exactly the right way, sometimes the results can be a little askew. Once again, it only tests for two out of the three types of SIBO. It's not perfect by any means, but it can be a good way to test. And I usually... If we couple that with symptoms, that's going to give us a pretty good answer. We can also look at like a GI map test. Not my favorite. I don't use a lot in my practice. You can also look at blood work. If you look at, and there's a lot of things that can impact this, but if you look at the, your neutrophil numbers, neutrophils number on your CBC with differential, this can give us an indication of bacteria and yeast overgrowth in the gut, assuming you don't have a current in infection uh, going on in your current gut. So these trends can help us once again, coupled with symptoms can give us a good idea if you have it. Now, how do you address it? Well, most people are going to say that you can take antibiotics for it, or you can do antimicrobials. Antibiotics usually are someone's going to be put on these for about two weeks. Antimicrobials, you usually, usually need to be on these for about 30 days. Um, Biotics has a really good protocol. Uh, there's the candy backed in AR and BR. That's a really great protocol. But here's the thing. If you just do one of those protocols uh, and or take the antibiotics, the chances of you end up with a reoccurring issue is pretty darn high. Let me tell you from someone who did so many SIBO protocols. I've, I've done them all and it always came back. And here's the reason. If you don't address why this happened in the first place, the issue will come back. Just because you get rid of the thing itself doesn't mean you're addressing the real reason why it happened. So our body's really smart and this bacteria in our large intestine should absolutely be there, but it should not come up into the small intestine. And so if it does, yes, we want to address the issue itself, SIBO. However, we also need to figure out why and how the body got there and why it couldn't keep the bacteria where it was in the first place, where it's supposed to be. So really common factors that go into this chronic stress, nervous system dysregulation is a really, really big one. Low stomach acid, also a really, really big one. However, there's two other really big ones that are oft, very, very often not addressed. And that is a toxin overload, meaning that if, if you have too many toxins in your body, and this could be mold, this could be heavy metals, this can be environmental toxins, this could be a combination of this, this is going to cause a lot of dysfunction in the body. A lot of things can kind of go wrong, including an overgrowth issue. Another thing that can happen and contribute to SIBO is parasite overgrowth. Now we all have parasites. Once again, it's not an issue. We all have them. It's fine. But if there's an overgrowth issue, meaning there's too many for our body to handle or they get into places where they shouldn't be, then it's an issue. So we need to address parasites as well if this is an issue. Uh, parasites, once again, are something like SIBO, whereas it can be a little tricky to test for. It'll often not show up in a GI map. It'll often not show up in direct blood testing. However, it can show up coupled with symptoms in a in the CBC with differential. If we look at the pattern of the monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils, if those are all elevated, all of these patterns are elevated and we're all trending high, this is a good, pretty good indication of a parasite issue, once again, coupled with symptoms. And if you don't address the parasites, 
I can guarantee, almost guarantee that this SIBO is going to come back at some point. So yes, we need to address SIBO, but we also really need to look at the bigger picture of how it got there and look at the whole body and make sure the whole body is functioning optimally so these issues don't come back. And that's where I see a lot of people miss the boat and end up with chronic and reoccurring issues like SIBO. So if you need more help with this, this is something that I've personally dealt with and we deal a lot with here in our practice at Trifecta Collective, feel free to book a free consult with us. You can click the link below in the comments to schedule your free consult and actually get rid of your SIBO for good.